A pro-Israel group is working hard to discredit American journalists who they claim are biased against Israel. Now in reality, these journalists tend to cover both what has happened to Israelis on October 7th, while also covering what Palestinian civilians are dealing with on the ground in Gaza. And that doesn't look so great for the Israeli government. And so now you have this group working pretty hard to discredit these specific journalists. Now I want to give you some background on the group itself. And then we'll talk about a very specific journalist they're going after over at the Washington Post. So the group is known as SKDK. They have close ties to President Biden and the White House, which is not surprising considering what we're seeing from Biden in his never ending support for Israel's far right government. SKDK has been running communications for the 107 project, a consortium of five Jewish organizations founded last year to promote continued US support for Israel and counter misinformation about the Israel Hamas war. Now over the past several months that work has basically consisted of sharing daily memos to journalists pointing out what the group uh, sees as flaws in their reporting, no problem with that. I mean, if you wanna say that you have an issue with the way a journalist has reported something or if they didn't get a fact right, if you contact the publication or if you contact the journalist and ask for a correction or clarification, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But uh, they argue that there has been a lack of coverage, under coverage, if you will, in regard to Hamas's sexual assaults of Israeli hostages. Which is news to me because I feel like that has been covered pretty extensively. They also call into question failures to acknowledge that the US government's assessment agrees with Israel that Hamas had a military presence at the Al Shifa hospital. Now remember, we had CNN reporters go to the Al Shifa, not the Al Shifa hospital, but we've had arguments that there, there's a military presence at a grave site, for instance, a graveyard. And then you have uh, Israel, uh, CNN reporters go to the graveyard because they wanna see the tunnels, they wanna see the shaft entrance into the tunnels. And then they find out that mm, the IDF and the Israeli government wasn't entirely accurate and um, honest in what they were claiming. But nonetheless, they, they don't like the negative coverage of what the IDF is carrying out. SKDK also has been keeping tabs on reporters that it felt were reporting and tweeting unfairly about Israel and putting pressure on major national news organizations to punish or remove these reporters from the beat. And they have a very specific target. That target is a reporter over at the Washington Post. Her name is Louise or Louise Love Luck. And I've actually read a lot of her reporting on this matter. I think she's doing a really good job. And in a five page document that was shared with Semaphore, which broke this story, the group included a list of grievances about her coverage of Gaza and tweets about the conflict. The group's issues with Love Luck included recent corrections. And editor's notes on her stories that it said demonstrated her erroneous or biased reporting. So they provided a specific example. And the example has to do with a piece written by Love Luck and others titled Israel's War with Hamas Separates Palestinian Babies from Their Mothers. Now, there was an editor's note right at the top of that piece. And an editor's note happens for further clarification or to correct something that wasn't exactly right in the reporting. That is what honest, sincere journalists do. And it is a good thing that they had that editor's note. Look, when it comes to war, oftentimes there's the fog of war, things change, facts on the ground change. And so it is important to correct your reporting and that's what they did. And here's what the editor's note said. An earlier version of this article about Palestinian mothers in Gaza who have been separated from their newborns mischaracterized some aspects of Israeli rules for permits that allowed some Palestinian women before October 7th to travel from Gaza to give birth at hospitals in the West Bank and Israel. The article incorrectly said that all Palestinian mothers who received authorization to leave Gaza for humanitarian reasons had to return to Gaza to reapply after their permits expired. In fact, it was not always necessary for mothers to return to Gaza. So they corrected the error. And for correcting the error, this pro-Israel group is trying to punish Love Luck for her reporting. 
We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members and then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference, click join now. Now there's more, Love Luck was also, um, also won the group's ire by failing at times to note that Gaza's health ministry is controlled by Hamas. So since she doesn't note, note that Hamas controls the Palestinian health ministry, uh, they're going after her. Because you must note that in an effort to discredit the civilian death toll that's been reported. Which by the way, is a conservative estimate of the civilian death toll because it does not take into account Palestinians who have been trapped under the rubble and are presumed to be dead. So I mean, I would love for Israel to allow reporters into the Gaza Strip to do actual reporting. I mean, you have some reporters on the ground there, Palestinian reporters, many of whom have um, dealt with the violence, hundreds of whom have died as a result of the violence. But those are the only journalists we can rely on. And I don't know how many of them are gonna be left uh, if this war continues on. The real question is, if you don't trust the Palestinian health ministry, which historically has been trusted and historically has been proven correct in the death toll figures that they've released, will you allow an independent party to go into the Gaza Strip and do an actual count? They probably won't do that, will they? Because the numbers for the Palestinian Health Ministry are actually accurate. It's just gross. And then they're going after her tweets. They dug into her tweets from when she was in college and they argue that she's been too critical of Israel um, all the way back to her college years. And as a result, she's not uh, suitable to report on this story, Jank. I, I think there's some gold in, in those uh, things that they're criticizing for in the past. And I, and I want you guys to know how this character assassination business works. So I'm gonna go back to that in a second. But first I wanted to point out, look, I get it. The people that are funding this are American citizens, but they love Israel and so they wanna attack and destroy anyone who dares to criticize Israel. And if you think, well, it doesn't sound like you get it. It sounds like you're hostile to them. No, I really do get it because I know Turks who think that it is the worst crime in the world to criticize Turkey or fellow Turks. And they would do the same thing and they would proudly do it, right? So I'm not blaming somebody based on their religion or background, etc. right? But is it weird and unacceptable? Of course it is. It would be unacceptable if anybody did it. In fact, think about it. Imagine that there was a group of Russian Americans who got together, collected a lot of money, and then put pressure on anyone who ever wrote critically about Putin or Russia. Would American media be like, "Oh, that's okay, yeah, we're getting pressured. Okay, sorry, sorry, we'll, we'll change, we'll change this, we'll change that. What else do we need to do to please Putin? I mean, I would hope that they wouldn't do that. How about if there was Chinese Americans who said, no, we funded a group to make sure that no one ever criticizes China. Well, we would all criticize that, right? We say that's not the right way. To, I know why you're doing it, and maybe you're doing it with great intent, but we can't have it, right? So obviously the same exact thing, not more, not less, same exact thing applies to this group that is supporting a foreign government and trying to intimidate American reporters into being biased in favor of them and against Palestinians who are being slaughtered. So how does this work? Not only do they nitpick tiny little details. Now is there people on the other side, really well funded Palestinians who are going around nitpicking things? Are you kidding me? There's been one article in the intercept that showed definitively that mainstream media is massively biased towards Israel. And this is after they got better. In previous conflicts, it was way worse, right? So intercept does a wonderful job of reporting. But outside, of, there's no group. There's no every time somebody's bias against Palestinians, nobody nitpicks them, etc. Totally uneven playing field. But that's not enough. They had to go back into our past. This is what I call needle in a haystack. They dig for needles in that haystack to try to find one thing or two things wrong and go, aha, and this is who she is. Now, get a load of the absurdity in this case. Quoting Sam before again, graphic eight. For many years, uh, Lovelock's online presence was that of a far left activist. <laughs> so she was not allowed to have opinions apparently before working at the Washington Post and besides which almost everything this group says is lies. So she has voiced negative opinions about pro-Israel American leaders and Israeli leadership. Is she as a reporter not allowed to criticize our government or other governments? Has been a proponent of the anti-Israel Qatar owned Al Jazeera TV. There are a lot of Jewish Americans who worked at Al Jazeera. 
So now if you just don't hate Al Jazeera, you're an anti-Semite, okay. And took part in the, this is my favorite. And took part in the Cambridge University occupation in 2010, which protested against proposed tuition fee rises where she attended university. The group wrote in a memo. So if you ever protested against tuition increases at your school, a pro-Israeli group might come for you one day and demand that you be fired. It's absurd. What Absolutely is Absolutely absurd. What is Absolutely this? absurd. The Washington Post should say, hey, we love you brothers and sisters, but go ahead and F off. We don't give a damn what you, what propaganda you would like us to print. I'm not gonna humor you. I get why you're doing it and you think you have good intent, but your intent is just terrible. You're telling me about how she did what it lowered to it when she was going to school and I should fire her for it, are you nuts? They also complained that she was angry about George Bush's memoir back in 2011. If you read George Bush's memoir about how he tortured people and did warrantless wiretapping on all Americans and broke all international law and killed hundreds of thousands of Iraqis and that didn't make you angry, I think you're a deeply immoral person. Look, Cenk, I want you to really internalize this story. I like deeply want you to internalize the story because this is where our power lies. And what I mean by that is we're never gonna get validation from corporate media. We're never gonna get validation from establishment politicians or an establishment party. And you know what? I don't want their validation. What I want is to serve our audience and give people to the best of my ability, accurate details about what's happening in our country and around the world. And no one, can stop us from doing it because you built this place. That is where your power lies. And I don't think you realize that. I want you to really internalize it because can you imagine this group coming to you and demanding to fire me or, or take me off the Israel Gaza beat because I'm too biased? You'd laugh in their faces. Yeah, I would, Anna, but uh, I hear you. That's power. I, I hear you and I appreciate you, but I, I don't need their approval. I need their amplifier. The reason this group does this it's not, they're not dumb, they're smart. Because they know that if they can get everyone to stop criticizing Israel, then Israel can do whatever they want. They could run roughshod, they can kill as many Palestinians as they want. They could grab Gaza, they could do whatever they want. As long as they make sure that that voice of protest never gets out. The, the voice of reality and honesty never gets out. So we have the Young Turks and TYT and we have our audience and we love you guys and you guys spread our videos and you share and that makes a giant difference. And we've gotten through the young, not just us, but a lot of people online. But yes, we were a large part of that 22 years here, right? And so they hate us because we showed young people the truth. But yep. at some point we have to get power so that we can change things. And in order to get that power, we need a larger amplifier to reach enough voters to make a difference. So I, I hear you, I, and you're not wrong, I've given up on mainstream media completely. And I've given up on politicians completely. They're never ever going to do the right thing voluntarily. So instead we have to rise up through social media. And we have to organize the internet, we have to work together. That is incredibly hard. But that's the only choice we have left. Otherwise, the powerless will continue to have no voice and the powerful will reign and this injustice will reign forever. So we have to work together online to create our own amplifier. We have to eventually get the power to get the change.